Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin and welcome to the McGuffin Show. Uh, this is our third episode here. I uh, hope you guys are, are joining us each week on, uh, on uh, both Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I've only been posting a uh, little short 14 minute clip on Instagram just because Instagram doesn't allow me to post the uh, full podcast. So if you guys want to watch the full podcast, you can always watch that uh, uh, on Facebook. But uh, yeah, third episode. Um, it, also too, if you guys have any questions for us or anything you guys want us to be chatting about each week, or if you have any fun insight uh, or different fun creative ideas uh, that we could kind of branch out with this, please let us know. Uh, and if you have any questions, you could uh, send me uh, send me a messenger uh, through Facebook, uh, whether it's to my Tyson McGuffin pickleball page or my camp page. Mr. McKenzie, what is good? Hey, doing doing well, man. Doing well. Uh, different sort of time here in Washington State. Uh, we went back a phase, so the gyms are closed down, restaurants closed down. So, not full on lockdown, but definitely uh, limited limited lifestyle. So, I am just chilling at home, um, just chilling. Uh, trying to get some training training in when I can. But uh, oh, yeah. our main gym got shut down, so. I played yesterday in the cold outside, but today we had uh, we had some snow, so we're gonna have to pivot directions uh, going right. forward for uh, for training for training now. Uh, and uh, I think we talked about this last week. Uh, you said last week that your kiddos are still in school. Are they still in school with this with this new? Uh, yeah. They are. Yeah. As far as I know, it didn't really affect schools yet. So okay. uh, kids are still still doing the regular school thing. Um, that's the option we chose for them in this state. We did have the option of having them do the kind of the online distance right. distance uh, learning thing, but we decided just to to do it regular, and it's it's been going okay so far. Yeah, actually, uh, we had a little family photo shoot on Saturday, and uh, a, a gal who did our did our little photo shoot. Her name's Sawani, and uh, her daughter goes to school up in Mead, and she's been going to school, and uh, and it sounded like like there, there really hasn't been any sort of cases or you know, any sort of big outbreak or anything like kids have been fine going to school and, and they've been able to manage it and stuff like that. So it's good to see that Thanks. there's not a, you know, uh, spike in cases and stuff like that with kids going back to school. Um, for sure. For sure. I think a lot of parents were probably concerned, but I think so far it's been, uh, it's been all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So snow just came today. I got to uh, take my little man to, to Moses lakes. So I'll be, I'll be mobbing through the snow tonight. We're actually looking at a new car. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we actually did the old, uh, we ended up like renting a car just to kind of test drive it, but we actually needed some extra space for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So it worked out pretty good. But uh, yeah, looking at a, a Ford Expedition, you know, like those, those okay. new Fords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, yeah. never been a Ford guy, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it just makes Range Rover, my Cadillac, they're nice cars. They're just not quite big enough. So we're looking for like a, you know, three row, seven seater. Uh, and, when you uh, need something that's good in the snow, getting the true, true yeah. winters with where oh, you're yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, man, looking at that Ford, it's pretty sweet. Um, so uh, that's where I, you, uh, test drove. That's where yeah, you just recently test drove. Yeah. Your, yeah. And, right. and, and over like the last year, we've actually like, as we've been traveling, we've been, uh, we've, uh, rented that car a couple of times, uh, and kind of tried it out, but uh, yeah, it's nice, man. You know, it's got all the, all the interior stuff. It's got a nice little exterior. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, we were kind of stuck on, uh, you know, like a, a, a model X or, or like a Beamer for the longest time. And it's like, at the end of the day, when you're, when you're sitting at a stoplight and you're in your model X, which costs like 110,000 and you're, and you're, <laughs> and you're, and you're looking at like a, like a brand new Kia, uh, uh, who, who is, is like a seven, you know, uh, seat, seven people, three row, just as big, has all the features, but it's 50 grand less. At the end of the day, does anybody right. care that you're driving a car that expensive? That's that's kind of what I'm what I'm. You know, to. man, it's, I, uh, I'm super tight with money, so yeah, I view the same. I look at it through the same lens. I mean, gosh. to look at something where you could save forty or fifty thousand right. dollars, and it still be you know kind of a luxury luxury vehicle for you. Yeah, yeah, I, and, and, and I think I, it's probably I, the better way. To go. No, no, for sure. And, and like anybody that I talk to that has tried a Tesla or that has a Tesla, like you know, they say it's it's a great mm -hmm. investment. They're always updating the sure. software and stuff like that. And like it, you know, I think uh, long term it makes sense, but. Uh, financially as of now it just doesn't so uh 
Well, and that technology is only going to get get better and better, better over right, the next few years. Right. That's few the thing, years like, too, yeah, so. like are you are you buying in too early where you're really not getting full usage of of the technology, right? Right. Uh, right. Uh, it's like it's like buying a smartphone when they first came out, right? You loved it, but like if you would have waited a few more years, yeah. it would have just you know paled in comparison. You know, probably same sort of thing with the car, but obviously a bigger investment. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but anyhow, man. Yeah. So uh, uh, just got back from. Just got back from Atlanta, Myrtle Beach, uh, ran two, three dayers, uh, kind of back to back. Hot Atlanta. <laughs> Hot, you know, it was actually pretty cold. It was, uh, it was. <laughs> uh, the first day I was there and it rained. The second or the second and third day I was there, it was like in the, in the 40s and 50s. But uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, actually drove, I never, never made that drive, but uh, like caught Friday through Sunday, had Monday off and then drove from uh, Atlanta to Myrtle Beach. It was like six hours. It wasn't, wasn't too bad, but it wasn't, wasn't great. Okay. Uh, and that's a bigger uh, drive for you. You're a, you're you a, know, you're a flight guy. I, I, I road trip it with the kiddos, but you, <laughs> you know, like you that trip. Uh, trip for one. <laughs> I rock the road trip. Yeah. <laughs> six uh, hours. Is that the most you've probably done in a while? I, honestly, right? it has. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, you know, when I was, when I was desperate with, with, with Ty, uh, you know, all last year. And, and I was trying to like spend as much time as I could with him. Uh, there was, there yeah. was a couple of times where I was just out of desperation. I would just drive to Yakima and drive straight back like a nine hour day. <laughs> right. Right. Just, <laughs> just, just do it. those hours in just when you can. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just make a nine <laughs> That's hour day. That's awesome that you did that though. Yeah. 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 But yeah. And then the dedicated, Beach, dedicated father, dedicated dad, baby. Uh, <laughs> and then Myrtle beach. Yeah. It was, it was like in the forties, man. It was cold. Honestly, it, it, was, it was, not, it was not pleasant at all um but, yeah, uh, yeah yeah camp campers were great though uh had, a, had, a, had a couple uh had two four old plus camps like one in one in atlanta and one in myrtle and then um and then had like a four or five day in both so had some higher level stuff okay. which is always you know kind of refreshing it's I mean, always nothing, fun yeah nothing, it, nothing against working with lower level players obviously they nope. they get more out of it and and are probably much more satisfied but there's there's definitely something to be said with you know working working more with higher level tactics and kind of using my experiences and stuff like that. And, you know, um, yeah, it's nice to be able to sprinkle in a few of the higher level ones because yeah. obviously you're always thinking about, uh, you know, geeking out on strategy tactics, all that. It's, yeah. uh, it's fun to be able to <laughs> deliver that to somebody who can, who can stay with you on those conversations for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I think too, like being able to like match your match experiences with theirs and, and yeah, you mm -hmm. can really just kind of dive into like, pressure scenarios, what's been taking place, like what, what your panic button is under pressure, you know, how mentally you're able to kind of keep yourself comfortable in, in big moments and stuff like that. So just cool stuff that, that mm -hmm. lower level people obviously uh, just have a hard time understanding uh, kind of at that level. But uh, for sure, for sure. So um, I was watching, uh, I think it was one of your Facebook posts. Uh, uh, was there a younger, a younger kid in one of your camps? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a, like a 12 year old. So I mean, he looked about 12, 13, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his name's uh, Dominic Osborne. Uh, so, so okay. mom, mom, Janae, and then dad, dad's name's Mark, uh, came all the way from um, like right outside of St. Clair Shore is actually where we're going to be teaching uh, at the Wimbledon Racquet Club uh, oh, nice. there, there in December. Yeah, they're like right outside of there. But uh, kind of cool. So 1044 Pro did that little uh, uh, exclusive kind of package, you know, uh, if you, if you bought a box, there was, there was a contest, the first 50 people were going to get pulled out of a hat. Right. And uh, yeah, anyhow, yeah, and yeah. so, so the winners got uh, free travel, uh, two day camp that was 699 value uh, and then uh, lodging covered. So yeah, lodging, airfare, and then camp. So pretty sweet. So he, yeah, so, so, sweet. He, so Heather and Peter Jensen, thank you very much. Uh, they, they ended up covering, three people's uh travel stay and camp so it's kind of cool so uh but yeah like the the whole, the whole family got to come dominic's a little stud man he's very competitive and uh i know i know how i was when i was 10 and yeah. uh i was i was one one competitive dude that had a hard time controlling my emotions and uh he's a he's a he's a total stud man he's uh like didn't didn't play tennis uh 4-0 player um okay you know, he's already he's a little well yeah, he's a little, it's a little like, kind of rough and raw, like around the edges with technique and stuff like that. But uh, the kid loves to play. He's easy to work with, um, you know, and he's just, and he's just hungry. So, uh, no, it was fun. It was definitely, definitely fun to, fun to work with, uh, 
work with a kid that age. I think, I think the last time that I had a kid that age in my camp was in Camden, South Carolina last year. I had like a little 12 year old, but uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, he was, he was all about it. He's, he's been like a, a fan of mine since like day one. He's got my shirt. He's got my paddle. He uses like the same serve. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it was actually That's was, awesome. You could see, <laughs> yeah, you he could was, see some it, of the serve. He was uh, copying your serve motion a little bit. I love it. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, he, yeah, no, he was like a little mini me, man. That was cute. But, uh, Hey, it must've been a pretty cool experience for him. So that's something just as an instructor, as a dad, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's going to be great to see the sport grow and be able to do, uh, camps, clinics with, with some no, more of the sure. youth and be able to teach that. I mean, it's almost like it's its own category. You've got your beginner, intermediate, advanced, but it seems like youth is, kind of just a different animal would be a lot of fun to work with more as, as we see the demand grow, uh, going forward. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, what'd you do this last week, buddy? What'd you have going so, on? So yeah. Um, yeah. Update, uh, with me, I played, uh, the tournament in Idaho falls, yeah, 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 yeah. um, hosted by Steve Deacon. It was a really, uh, really fun time. Um, a little bit of a story. I got to play with uh, Callie at the pro level for the yeah. first time. Uh, kind of funny well maybe not funny but uh story we uh so we're playing spencer smith and his partner i forget her first name but cali no the first game it wasn't, wasn't okay. Callie. um no Callie, it wasn't cali cali played um, with chuck, chuck taylor yeah she uh, played with chuck and i think they yeah. finished uh second they, they okay. played really well uh, so anyways we lost the first game i think 11 9 cali was obviously really nervous so felt decent about going into the second game that some of her nerves were, were calmed a little bit we could just kind of go out and play and I think we were down 2-1 in the second, and she badly rolled her ankle. Um, we had to default. We had to take her to urgent care, get an x-ray. It was negative, but it's, it's about a week later now, and she uh, still can't walk, put any pressure on it at all. So I've been kind of doing the Mr. Mom thing, doing Those the, little, doing the yeah, cooking, right. uh -huh. putting on the apron, uh, <laughs> helping out where I can. So no, it was good. Uh, fun tournament other than that. I mean, obviously, that was a real bummer yeah, that happened on the last day, but – um, I got third in singles, went in hoping I could win the thing or do a little better. So it was kind of a bittersweet bronze, but uh, obviously could have done worse too. So it was a lot of fun. We made a family trip out of it. Uh, yeah. We went with Jalen and Jesse Peters, uh, you know them, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. did an Airbnb with them. So it was uh, kind of a hybrid tournament with uh, family trips. It's always kind of fun to, to blend those together. No, for sure. Talk about getting, getting the most out of it. Killing two birds at one stone, yeah, baby. Yeah, definitely. Family, Absolutely. pickleball, friends. I mean, that, that stuff totally, totally sells, man. How often do you think people are like, you know, going as a unit or like going as like a pickleball club? You know, they all, they all train together. They all kind of travel together. I mean, it's funny. Like, yeah. I mean, literally, it, it, it's like, it's like uh, being on like your kid's soccer team, right? And like traveling with all the soccer <laughs> parents and all staying yeah. in the same hotel. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Well, I think it, it, it adds to the whole the whole experience. I mean, tennis, as an adult, tennis wasn't like that at all for no, me. So no. to have these little social groups where everybody kind of picks the same tournaments and everybody kind of cheers on their local club, it's a really cool. unique and cool thing. So, I mean, it, it's great to see all the health benefits of pickleball, you know, for competitive people like you and me. It can be our outlet, you know, for that. But the, the social aspect right. and the sense of community with it is really – uh, unprecedented in any other sports uh, that I know about. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And obviously, unlike ourselves, people see it much more than just competition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of reasons to love it. That might be our number one, but we kind of are probably in the minority yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah. 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 My, my mom, uh, she's kind of like an old, old tennis player, uh, but just started playing pickleball about a year and a half ago. Um, and, um, <laughs> uh yeah and single you know it doesn't really date or doesn't really hang out or anything and and uh yeah it's kind of it's kind of opened her up a little bit you know she has like a little friend group now and she's able to travel a little bit play some tournaments my, my other brother that lives with her troy like literally changed his freaking life man like lost 40 pounds mm -hmm. uh uh he drives truck he's like he has like a cdl license so he drives truck there in seattle and uh back in the day he was like a video game guy and then he would drive truck mm -hmm. all day come home and just play video games and, uh, and uh, yeah, now he's got like this newfound confidence and he's traveling and, and meeting pickleball mm -hmm. players. And it's cool, man. I mean, literally it can, it can pack in so much confidence and just give you a whole new perspective, a whole new outlook on life. Uh, and then definitely a whole new friend group, you know? Um, 
But uh, yeah, I think for a lot of people, it can be that missing piece, right? It can be that missing piece of yeah, yeah. Whether it's social, whether it's it's healthy. I mean, definitely, the body is probably liking it more that he's he's going playing pickleball rather you than know, rather than the, the video games. Right? Correct. The body, the body's <laughs> liking it, and I'm and I'm pretty sure the females are too. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Uh, Which you hey, can't hey, find, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's all good, man. Uh, have you have you seen Steve Taylor's little uh, his 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 new little uh, I don't even know what you call him little bobblehead photos? It's like it's it's <laughs> oh yeah. It's, I think I saw one of Zane. It's like a little yeah. It's he's like got little, the big shoes. Zane yeah. Navratil. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's one of Ben that just came out and like his body is is like a beanpole. And then he's got like a, he's got like a gigantic head, a gigantic paddle, right. and then like huge. Shoes. The paddle's big, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty creative idea. I've only seen it the is. one of uh, Zane Navratil, but yeah, yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, I actually, I actually threw one in last week. Uh, it was the, uh, it was like a little video thing, like a GIF of of me at Newport, and I was like swinging a forehand, but I used it as like the intro for the for the podcast. But it's like they my. Said- it's like my right, head right. bouncing around in like a little video. Kind of cool. But uh, Steve Taylor, awesome. Tournament job. directors. Awesome Tournament job, directors, buddy. take notice. People, people don't want the t-shirts anymore. Give them a bobblehead. Bobblehead. <laughs> Pro bobbleheads. That's the new thing uh-huh. for the, the, the tournament swag bag. The old, the old bobblehead. Or, <laughs> or you can get the uh, Rob Cassidy uh, yearly calendar. I don't, I don't know if you guys know what that is. Yeah. I don't, but ba- something tells me people would go for the Rob Cassidy calendar, maybe even more. It's got a little slice of that bod. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, bas- it's basically uh, 12 different photos uh, and a, a different photo, obviously, for each month. And, and Rob's not wearing a lot of clothing. So uh, mm. you take it I don't know why. It. So having, having no knowledge about it, what I'm picturing, and if everybody, anybody's ever met Rob Cassidy, I'm picturing like the Zoolander. But like every look being the same look, the yeah. blue, blue steel, Ferrari, La Tigra. He just, he just changes his outfit and calls it a different name. That's totally what I'm picturing right now. <laughs> Rob Cassidy, you are legendary, buddy. <laughs> always always, always uh, love talking about you and having, good, having some oh, good for fun. Sure. Uh, hey, so uh, uh, real quick. So Mr. Mr. Rafa Hewitt looked like he looked like he had some pretty good results uh, there in Idaho Falls. You obviously played him in the, in the, in the bronze medal match. Please. Please just tell, tell, tell the viewers how many, how many let courts he had. <laughs> well, I mean, like I told him, yes, it was left. So I think he had eight or nine. He had eight or nine, uh, you know, third okay, shot drive let courts. Right. You got, you guys are playing very, indoors. It's, it's, it's cold and you're, and you're playing. Very like cold. Net. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the courts were um, pretty compact. You didn't have as much space in the back. So return positioning had to be a lot closer. You had to take your returns as a half volley a lot of times um, wasn't my favorite thing to do, but um, Rafa played great. I mean, honestly, all those excuses aside, I think he had a very good shot to beat me anyways. Um, He he didn't just play well. I think you've seen, everybody can kind of see flashes of the talent, but he put the talent together for for a whole match, uh, you know, several matches really. And uh, like I complimented him on, he played a lot smarter too. He wasn't, he was hitting both sides really well, but he wasn't just settling for the backhand. He was using his feet a lot earlier. He's actually playing really smart. Uh, he was kind of moonballing the serve a little bit because uh, oh, people oh, didn't oh. have as much space. So the top spin kind of jumped into yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Very sure. awkward, very awkward to return. So he, uh, he had it all working, and it was disappointing to lose to him because I hadn't before, but yeah, he no, played sure. me close. He played yeah. me close so many times. I knew it was a matter of time, and, yeah. and he it was somewhat validating because after he beat me, he, he had to beat, beat Spencer. Uh, Spencer. And he, Spencer, and he, he had him to beat him in, twice. And he, he beat, beat him, him twice. He had to he beat him in yeah. straights. Or no, no, no. Sorry. Did he? I, I, I think he beat him in three, okay. and then he beat him in the game to fifteen. But I can't remember for sure. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head too. Like, we obviously know Rafa's game pretty pretty stinking well. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's 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 true. Like, usually he can he can bring the level for like a game or like a game and a half or like half a game. But usually he cannot string it together for, for three straight games or for, you know, two games in a row. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's, there's definitely something to be said with, with uh, you know, having talent, but, but being able to use that talent for like a duration of time, right? Uh, and, and obviously being, being disciplined and being like mature with your, with your shot selection and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I mean, talk about a guy who, who's definitely talented, 
uh, you know, uh, we, we obviously know his practice situation, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're in loose and it's not great. The guy works 60 hours yeah. a week. He's a, he's a, he's, he's a farmer, probably drinks way too much Coke and he has nobody <laughs> and he has nobody to play with. Right. So, I mean, I mean, for, right. for a guy who doesn't have a lot going on down there, I mean, it's, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. So, um, uh, talking about Rafa, we're actually trying to get, uh, if the, if the viewers want to know, we're actually trying to get Rafa up to up to North Idaho and get him out of Lewiston uh, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, just, just uh, get him up here near us. He can train with us. He can teach some camps. Um, so just trying to get him closer to us so we can kind of use him for, for a little group. Um, talk about a guy. Who we would love it. We would love yeah. it. Because he probably, we probably only play with him. I don't know, once a, with, with as much as you travel and I travel and, and once, his schedule maybe once, once a yeah, month. Yeah. I mean, shoot, it's, it's, you know, slim picking. So um, yeah. You know, and like you, 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 you kind of think about people like that. Like if you put them around a good situation where, you know, they can practice, they can work out, you know, like, you know, what, what can stem from that? Um, I think someone like a Rafa could do, could do, could do pretty well. Um, but uh, obviously still uh, working on his discipline and, and, and working on shot selection. But um, uh, guy's got a pretty lively arm. I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Fast hands, Fast little hands. lively arm. And, you know, I mean, he still is pretty dang quick around the court, too. Like, still uh, moves pretty fast. I, I mean, I, I mean and for, he was – Yeah. For, for, for yeah, being so – That's actually being, kind of funny. Yeah. For being 20 pounds after, after, overweight, uh, the, guy, the guy can move pretty well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, very, very much so. Uh, some, some old lady, I guess, came up to him after he finished uh, and was complimenting him. Uh, but it was kind of like it, the delivery – almost was like a half, a half compliment she half said i delivery. cannot believe yeah i cannot believe you move so well with with you know with looking at you i had, had no idea that you'd be able to move so well this is after he won the singles and so it's like well kind of a compliment right like he does cover the court really really well he's just a great athlete he really is so my my Seahawks got a got a W on Thursday. It was good to see that they actually beat the Cardinals. Cardinals were uh, number big win. one. Yeah, it was a big one. So they were uh, Cardinals were number one in the conference, and Seattle was number three. And and with with getting that getting that W, put them back back at number one. So it's good to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, so good good little W for my Seahawks. Actually, kind of cool too. Um, a, a dude that I went to high school with. His name's Joey Harris. Uh, mm-hmm just signed so he's he's been playing in the nba for the last three or four years he actually um uh he actually was on the bench uh playing for the cleveland cavaliers when they won the championships like i don't know three or four years ago when when oh when so he, he got a ring nice he got he got oh it's, i don't i don't know uh I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't get a ring he he started like or sorry he he was like a seven or an eight guy and uh yeah actually like i'll have to ask him because i i I don't think i've asked him i don't i don't think he i don't think you get a ring if you're on the bench i could i could be wrong though i i i I, I think you do i'm I'm almost positive you do unless you're not on the the roster or something so he would he was imagine sorry see he was he was going back and forth he was playing like on their like triple a or whatever their little like semi pro d league like yeah he was like the d league or something he was bouncing he was bouncing back and forth so i uh, what, I, okay. what I thought that if you bounce back and forth, you don't get a ring. But anyhow, uh, the, be, guy, right. the, the guy's a total stud, man. He ended up uh, uh, playing for University of, of Virginia uh, and obviously played for Lake Shaline High School. We were like a 1A high school. He was averaging like 40, 50 <laughs> points a game, like dunking on dudes <laughs> in high school. Just got, yeah. oh, the guy was a, he was a bad man. So, uh, <laughs> so he, he played for the Cavs for like a year and then went to the Magic for a couple of years. And then he's been in he's been in Brooklyn. He's been playing for the Nets, and and mm-hmm. he's actually started for the last two years. And uh, probably his biggest accomplishment was two years ago he won the three point shooting contest and beat beat Steph Curry in the finals. Badass. Beat Curry, jeez, yeah. that's yeah. something you can tell your grandkids. Unreal, unreal. But you yeah. said he just signed like a like so, a pretty big deal, right? Yeah, so he just signed a four year deal uh, worth seventy million or seventy five million. Ooh. Not not too shabby. So, little now. Little kid. Where was he uh, in relation to you uh, in age? Yeah, the same so age, the same grade. Dude, he, this dude was four years younger than me, and he and like oh. I played, I played basketball up through like eighth grade, and then then I ended up wrestling in high school. But uh, uh, he, so like on my seventh and eighth grade AAU team, he was he was starting on our team. Okay, so yeah. he was this he's four years younger than you yeah, guys. Yeah, four he's years younger. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Sick, yeah. sick ball handling skills, uh, and then and then he was he was pretty skinny. Uh, 
uh, skinny all throughout high school. And then once he got to college, he definitely fluffed up. So yeah, now he's like six, six, big old, uh, big old white dude. But uh, he's got a big old beard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a big like old skinny little kid anymore. Yeah. 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 But uh, kind of, kind of a cool story, man. Like his, his dad was like the head basketball coach there for, there for Lake Chelan. Uh, uh, but like the kid literally was just a gym rat. Like, I mean, yeah. I can, I, I can remember uh, like, like the wrestling room was, uh, was like in the gymnasium, but it was like up on top. If that makes sense. So like, as mm -hmm. I was like in the wrestling room, uh, whether I was working out or wrestling, I could look down like at the gym. And I remember like in the mornings, I would like go to like the wrestling room in the morning and like cut weight and stuff like that. And like every morning, Joey was in the, uh, Joey was like in the gym shooting hoops, you know, I mean, uh, and I mean, this was like an ongoing thing. So, uh, yeah. he was, yeah, he was like the high school manager, you know, as a, as a kid. And then from like morning <laughs> till night, like he was just a total gym rep. Um, but, uh, pretty cool, man. It's what like, it uh, takes. It's what yeah. it takes. Yeah. And if, if you're in it like a, especially too, if you're from a small town, like you've, you've got right. to work your ass off. Like if you don't have any, options, you're not going to see the competition. No. You're not going to see the competition. Yeah. yeah. So you have to just work privately yeah, independently yep yeah it's funny because yeah, we're uh we're friends we know in our our pickleball circle here in uh in spokane is adam morrison's dad uh oh, john yeah. and i was talking to him talking to him about you know adam growing up and he said the same thing just followed him around everywhere because uh adam, takes, john was a, was a basketball guy and just total gym rat just from a little kid all the way up that's cool and that's cool and that's definitely there's there's various ways to get there but hard work is probably the easiest way um, <laughs> most consistent way for sure yeah uh okay so uh thanksgiving uh this 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 coming week what do you guys do for thanksgiving you guys are you guys like seafood or or ham or turkey or you guys go all out we usually or? do we usually do the ham thing and a lot of times we'll uh we'll make a trip over to the west side of the state and visit either my parents or hers decided to do christmas with them instead so we're going to do thanksgiving here but um gonna have to let my kids be a little disappointed because dad's uh dad's doing the thanksgiving cooking now with with oh, being out so it may, out. Be, it may be it may be a step down or a couple <laughs> steps down from from other years but uh right. how about you guys what do you guys usually do yeah, so uh, kind of, kind of like you. Obviously, have family over in Seattle, so we're uh, we're, we're we're flying over to Seattle uh, Wednesday night, and then nice. uh, we'll do we'll do Thanksgiving over there for a couple of days, and I'll head back here. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and in the meantime, just kind of getting geared up for for Newport next week, uh, getting some training in for the next you know next two weeks. Uh, played some mm -hmm. with Leia this morning. Had a little six a.m. morning sesh with with Miss Jansen. <laughs> so uh there's right there's a grinder right there she's been she's been on the court a lot oh, been all over the country it. god she's a junkie all about it all about it because i've got her yesterday she played with you today she's, yeah yeah she's no, she getting better very very quickly yeah yeah no she is definitely watch out watch out <laughs> uh hey so want to want to thank all of our sponsors this week uh selkirk sport turn grip voodoo pain relief cream 1044 pro uh, pickle play, ASEA, Beamer, Salt Stick, Vitamin Drip CDA, and Jolt Therapy. I uh, want to thank you for all your continued support. Um, and uh, let's, let's talk about topics for the week. Um, so first topic, first topic is uh, we kind of have a little, uh, a little wrinkle in some of the bigger uh, PPA tournaments. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, different format for some of those PPA tournaments. Um, and then also too, just talk about uh, your partners for 2021. I'll talk about my partners. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, something else I want to chat about is uh, Steve Deacon's consistency. Um, obviously the guy has been uh, playing at a pretty high level the last year and a half, but obviously the last year he's been very consistent with being on the podium. Also too, very consistent with hosting a lot of tournaments. Gosh, the guy, the guy hosts in every other tournament that I, that I play. Um, you got you got to up your networking game. Why? Well, I, I, he I guess. Right people up there, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, Steve, who, who do I got to call? <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon the podcast is going to be hosted by deacon sorry sorry yeah Justin. right right <laughs> he's going to take it over <laughs> yeah and, and then uh other little topic uh in which we'll talk about every week is going to be our little nugget for the week uh cool. and uh and that nugget could be a wide variety of things um okay so uh yeah so so ppa format so this is what i just found out i actually love the idea uh, I, I i don't think you're gonna like the idea but uh 
Uh, All right, let's hear it. Lay so, it on me. So I, I believe there's 14 PPA tournaments, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure on like how many tier ones and tier twos and tier threes and all that stuff. But, uh, but, I, but I know that three tier ones, uh, there's going to be U.S. Open style format where basically it's single elimination. Okay. Single elimination. Okay. So if you obviously, if you lose, the best you can do is bronze. Uh, and then get this. So if you if you make it to the finals, the finals best three out of five. Boom. Whoa. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah. Wow. So so here's 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 how I see it. Uh, obviously, if you're winning, and I, I I mean you could you I mean you could essentially play your winners bracket semi at noon, right? Great. Let's let's say you're let's say you're you know done by done by one. And then let's say like you have a scheduled final at four or five. That way they can like promote the mm -hmm. scheduled final. Uh, the non pickleball eye actually knows who's playing. Um, Cause I mean, like as of now it's true, like for whether, whether it's a pickleball player or it's the non pickleball eye, um, no, nobody knows who's actually playing on ESPN. And, and also too, nobody even knows if that team is a seed. And I mean, I don't know. I know when I, like if I were to watch hockey, if I were to watch baseball or just things, sports that I don't watch, what's enticing mm -hmm. to me is when I can see a seed. Like, like when I, when I can sure. see like the one seed playing the four seed, just something to yep. that, you know, kind of sells, yep. sells a little bit. Uh, so I think you need that context yeah. as a viewer for sure. Yeah, yeah, for yep. sure. So have, having that less matches for us, uh, you know, add some more pressure and some more purpose with those main draw matches. Uh, and, and it, and at the end of the day, um, like to be able to have a little four hour break and then come back in, I don't know. Like I just, I'd like taking time off and, and, and kind of plain and simple. I, I like winning a winner's bracket final and then having time to wait. Right. So, yeah. so, 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 so no, now it's, yeah, I, now it's like I'm the same you. thing where, yeah, I'm mean, obviously it's just single elimination, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, kind of, kind of interesting, but, um, I think if it's going to, if it's going to be promoted the, the right way on TV and if it's going to grow on TV, it's going to be, it's going to have to be tied to like seeds and big matches and like scheduled matches at like select times. Right. Um, so, so there's still, so if, if you lose in the first or second round, you still can play through to potentially finish in bronze. Is that, that's the yes. way it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't mind that. I, I really don't. I, I think that like, like you mentioned, I think that for the direction of going for, for TV it's more like tennis. And honestly, with me thinking singles, um, I think it's just too many matches potentially in one day, um, especially as the draws get bigger, the athletes get fitter. Uh, I just think that nobody wants to see a finals where cramping or just too much on the body is going to factor into that match. I think people want to see the best match possible. Um, so two athletes somewhat or relatively fresh is is the most fun so i wouldn't say that that i hate that plus um i've played this scenario out in my head realizing that with the current format there's no way for me to not have to beat you hey, to still hey, hey, win a on. tournament okay hang on, hang on. one thing i wouldn't mind about this either is just with this format just make it sure i'm on the opposite end of the draw as you and then just have to worry about everybody else i <laughs> don't want any part of playing you anymore it seems like i meet you in the God, I Second know. Second round I of know. like half the tournaments I play. <laughs> no, no. When I when I wake up in the morning and I see your name like in my little quarter, I'm like, gosh, I freaking play this guy five days a week, and he knows my game so stupidly well, and I don't want to play him. Yeah, you're always looking to play somebody a little bit different, but right, you right. can't mind it too much, right? No, no surprises <laughs> for me. <laughs> and let's nice, face it, nice I little, been very close. It's a nice little tune-up, but but no, but no, no, no. We just match where we just have to keep the score. We 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 just we just know each other's game too too well. I mean, it just for yeah, sure, it's not for sure. fun at all. Um, but uh, I was gonna tell you, like the I I mean I don't know when was. When was the last time that Ben or I lost in the winner's bracket final and then came back and won in the final? I, yeah, great question. It, it, just, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't. And, and it's not even just winning, but, like, I mean, you, you can see it, but, I mean, you can attest to this. 
the body just doesn't have a whole lot left most of the no. time when you've been in that scenario, right? And, I mean, and you're, many, you you have the reputation of being year? one of the yeah. fittest guys. Yeah, reputation of being one of the fittest guys around. You know, you're digging deep trying to find what you can, but by the time you get into that final, most of the time it's kind of decided already. It seems like the winner's bracket That's final – is really the final most of the time yeah. so nobody nobody wants to see frankenstein cramp anymore right <laughs> they, just, they just don't want to god it's t it's terrible to watch no no you want to see people's best stuff for sure um so but, partners, uh, partners yeah, yeah, 2021 yeah. so who, who do you got who do you got who you got buddy no, I actually, so, uh, so I don't have I don't have all the tournaments lined up yet but uh so a few i'm, I'm looks like i'm gonna play at least one or two with rafa that we've been talking about I'm going to play for the first time um, with Caden Nemoff. Yeah. I think we're doing the – I think it's the Lakes. I think it's the Lakes uh, in, in spring. And then I'm playing Newport with a young man by the name of Nick Garza. I don't know if you're familiar with his game. He just played in Vegas. He did just a 5-0 with, uh, with DJ Young, and, and they won that. And I played some rec games with him. And really solid, solid, solid game. The right temperament really wants to work the point. So – Pretty yeah. excited about uh, about our chances down there. Okay, and then uh, and then mixed, you said. Yeah, so mixed right now. I only have Leia. Um, we're doing the uh, the APP Masters in Punta Gorda in January, and we've only played one other time, and we did really well. So uh, we're gonna do that, and then I don't know for the rest of the year. It's kind of tough uh, finding finding ladies, so I'm gonna have to try to try to try to network a little better. And apparently, my wife's uh, my wife's out now. <laughs> Callie's yeah, right with the ankle so <laughs> i'm gonna have to scramble so how about how about you uh yeah so playing with rye all year and then yep. uh and then yeah, playing i think 18 tournaments still still trying to figure out like the the outside or like the four tournaments outside of you know the uh uh six the or the yeah yeah the the 14 ppa but uh uh, pretty sure it's going to be U.S. Open Nationals, World Pickleball Championships, and then still trying to figure out what the other one's going to be. I'm, I'm honestly thinking mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the APP uh, there, there in Punta Gorda. I mean, we're, we're there the, from – The Masters, we're there, yeah. Yeah, we're there from the second to the fifth teaching. And then basically, like, if I, if I didn't play the tournament, I would just, you know, watch all weekend. And then the following week, we have two two-day camps back-to-back. -back, so I'm, I'm already there. So uh, I'm, I'm actually thinking about considering playing with Andre, and then I'm trying to get uh, I'm trying to get a female. But um, I mean, I don't I don't know. I'm like, and like Riley can't play; he's got to level up camp right. and stuff like that. And I don't know; it's kind of tricky. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. And I think people find themselves in this situation a lot if you're kind of on the tour, if you're a big level name. Is you know, if you have to scramble for a partner, you, you want to make sure that they're solid enough where you still have a chance, right? right. Otherwise, it's, it's not as much fun. Andre's a stud. It would be yeah, great sure. if you could lock him down. But hopefully yeah. there'll be a, a floater in the, yeah. in the mixed category that you, can, that you can nab up. Right, right. But, uh, but yeah, playing mix with uh, Lee, Anna Lee. Um, nice. I believe a uh, couple with Kath – oh, sorry. One with Catherine, a uh, couple with Callie. And then I think I have Leia for like one or two, but, uh, Sweet. but yeah, man, looking forward to 2020. Mixed bag. Yeah. Mixed bag, you know, just being my, being my usual slutty self. Um, <laughs> I'm just just Anna, Anna Lee, do not listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, man, definitely, definitely super excited for 2021 and uh, just excited to have a nice like balanced year with camps and, 18 tournaments, not, not 30 and, uh, you know, be able to train and, uh, train the right way and be able to train at home more and have more family time and stuff like that. I know we, we, we kind of talked about this last week, but the idea that I thought I was going to play 30 and teach all these camps, like there's just, there's no stupid way. There's no way. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been saying both. Sometimes you commit to, to certain things scheduling wise, just like, Oh yeah, I'll make it work. But you actually start looking at the calendar and seeing what that looks like. And, and it's kind of a different story when you're like, like Oh man, I'm, when am I going to be home? When am I going to have time for anything else? So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's a, it's a better long-term strategy for you and, and other pros going forward. Yeah. Hey, so, so give me, uh, give me your thoughts on Deacon's game. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Kind of. So, what so I mean, I think part of the reason we, we decided to talk about him rather than others who've also probably been very consistent is just, he's done it with so many different partners at this point. You look at over the last couple of years, it seems like very consistently sneaking in a bronze or a silver at, you know, big events, 
And his partner is always a good player, but a lot of times is it maybe that that same level of elite, or even if they are, it seems like he's he's mixing it up and still having that success time and time again with different people. So, just in uh, you know, I don't know Steve super well, but had a few conversations with him, and the thing that stands out to me is pickleball IQ very very high. The guy's very smart. He really understands what's going on out there, and then I think he just has that that perfect uh, competitor's temperament, right? Like he's focused, he's engaged, but he doesn't try to do too much. He plays within himself, um, even in mix sometimes where it's, it's tough to not try to try to do too much and be that hero. But I think he just has a really high understanding of what he's supposed to do out there. And, uh, and when he needs to turn it on and bring the aggression, he doesn't try to force that. I think he really waits for the right moment and then commits to it fully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I mean, just just this just this last year. Um, I mean, you know, Steve uh, played played Vegas with, uh, or sorry, sorry, played played Chicago Open, took bronze with Deckel. Uh, a week mm-hmm. later, uh, played Vegas Open, took took bronze with Lang, and then a week later, uh, plays Texas Open and takes a bronze with Joey. Now, the unfortunate thing yeah. is, is that all three of those tournaments, he actually had to lose to me in the, in the bronze medal match. <laughs> Take that, Steve. <laughs> but in just about all those tournaments, I mean, first was Ben and whoever his partner was, probably Matt most of the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Matt, right? And then, and then you, and, you and Riley were second. So you guys have been kind of greedy at, at the top for, for the time being. And there's a variety of depth and a lot of good teams that could squeeze in there with the bronze. Three. But, for sure, but, but yeah, Deacon, but, but yeah. Deacon's been beating those guys out with with different partners time and time again. So definitely, definitely a top five guy in doubles. Yeah, for no, me. no, I mean, I, I, I definitely tip my hat. He's he's yeah. a stud for sure. Yeah, and definitely something to be said with you know, uh, let's say five. You know, let's say out of like the top three, there's potentially like five or six teams that could end up taking bronze, and and with mm-hmm. Steve being you know so consistent with. Uh, with that bronze podium um, definitely def- definitely comes to show like him taking over to a certain degree, his, his variety with, with different partners and different players and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think Steve, uh, uh, I mean, first of all, he's a great guy. Um, I, I mean, for, for, you know, being, uh, you know, uh, is he mid forties or sorry? Is it, uh, is he low I think he's 46. 46. 46. I think he's around 46. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, so he the told guys, me in four years, he's going to start playing singles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, for, for a guy to be competing in 50 and 50 and below and to be 46 and to be competing at that level. Um, and to look as fit as he is. I mean, the guys, the guy's obviously doing something mm-hmm. very right, but, uh, so yeah, no kudos to him to be playing at that level, uh, at that age. I know that probably doesn't mean anything to him, um and steve i would i would love to see you play singles in four years buddy i would i would love to see that <laughs> he'd be tough he'd be, oh, he'd be yeah. really tough I, he, he, I, he we were talking a little bit he's like ah, i don't know if i could play with with the younger guys and i i call i call bs i think he'd do just fine even at our level right out of the gate but obviously speed and and fitness yeah. and the you know it's a different game but yeah. he's a smart guy i think if he ever yeah. decides to play singles he'll do very well yeah, yeah, no, and talk about a guy who's just like a, a freaking bulldog, like wants to play every tournament, you know, like the guy just lives and breathes pickleball right now. And, and, and I mean, back, back to his age, for him to be that competitive and for him to be that intense at that age just comes to show like the guy is just a freaking workhorse, you know, and he just, yeah. he just loves yeah. it. And I, and I like me, me growing up as a wrestler, uh, that getting installed in me, like in a, you know, at a, at a very young age, like I have... I have a lot of respect for, for, for people that have that much intensity and just love the sport. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. And he's def- definitely a guy that you don't want to see early, early in the draw, uh, <laughs> does, does everything pretty well. Uh, I would say, mm-hmm. I mean, kind of, kind of like an Adam or like a Deckel. like most of his offense is actually from the baseline tees off on yeah. most of the thirds. Um, uh, you know, plays, plays pretty safe in transition. And then once he gets to the kitchen line, it's just more so a, counterattacker uh but it looks like he's yeah. starting to add some more offense and like in mix he's starting to speed up more off the bounce he didn't usually or yeah. i guess back in the day he didn't speed up as much off the bounce um but uh yeah it just seems like as he's playing more tournaments and stuff like that you're starting to add add more tools to his game uh, but he's i would up I would, off the backhand now i think more often than he used to like uh he used to just kind of cut it stay consistent on that side mm-hmm. but i've seen him pull the trigger even on that side uh several yeah. times so but i speak. i i put him in that in that category of like you know top 
top three, top four hands, you know, like the guy he's got some serious punch with his, with his counter, um, you know, whether, yeah, I guess whether he's, whether he's recountering, whether he's countering, um, he's got some, he's got some pretty easy, easy stick off of that head paddle. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a guy that's got some game and that's, that's done it with a, with a wide range of people. So, so Steve, yep. you are very, uh, very well liked, <laughs> even, even with you dropping your <laughs> Selkirk contract, buddy, I guess, I guess you can be a head guy now. You, you I guess. Went, just went just for now. Team. Um, <laughs> Okay, so so Kyle, tell us tell us your little nugget for the week, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's go so, with the, let's go with a um, more of a uh, technique nugget. So uh, we'll talk about kind of the difference between backhand and forehand uh, in, in fast exchanges or on the volley is our forehand, and we see this all the time when we teach. Uh, people tend to catch the forehand late or behind their body in those fast exchanges. So. Um, because we have that increased range of motion, that's more of a tendency on the forehand side. So one thing to think about when you're in a hand speed battle, try to keep your dominant. So I'm right handed to so be my right elbow tucked in the moment that elbow kind of bows out. I tend to swing or lag a little bit more on the shot, but if I can keep that elbow tucked in, my range of motion is more limited. And, and in those hand speed battles, I mean, it's fractions of a second that you're trying to gain to get an edge on your opponent. So keeping that elbow tucked in will help you go a long way in gaining some of those fractions of a second back to be able to stay on the offensive. Yeah. How about definitely. you, buddy? Definitely. Definitely good stuff. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think like a phrase that I, that I talked about, uh, or I mean, it's, it's something that's always kind of mentioned in my camps, but something that like really kind of hit home, uh, you know, at the Atlanta camp and at the Myrtle camp is that, when, when people are speeding up, uh, you don't, you don't have to like bring your hands back to ready. Or like, if you, if you like look to slide over and like take a ball in the middle and poach and look to speed up middle, stay middle, you don't have to recover and like bring yourself back yep. over. So uh, a big little nugget was just starting and staying, or if you're going to, if you're going to start the mess, it's your job to clean it. Or if you're going to start speeding up with the forehand, think about staying and cleaning up with the forehand, plain and simple. Usually, I don't know what the percentage is, but usually when, when people speed up, the counter comes right back to where the speed up started. So if you're going to start shit, clean that shit up. Um, but, uh, and, and it just seemed like too, like, you know, if I told people to speed up backhand, if they stayed backhand and they sat and camped, they were, they were hungry and eager and, a, and alert for that, for that next one. And they were almost early, um, you know? So I think just being, being hungry, being eager, and, and, you know, after you speed up, whether it's forehand or backhand, or if you like, you know, if I'm on the left and I, and I look to run around my, my backhand dink and I go inside out forehand with it, and then I use that next forehand dink and I go up the line with it. Well, when I, when I speed up forehand line, I'm going to sit and straddle uh, so I can kind of camp, camp on that next one. So I think a yeah, big thing is, is just starting and staying, or if you're going to start backhand, stay backhand, start forehand, stay forehand. Um, it's just interesting how, how that, how that counter usually comes right back to where the, where the speed up started, you know? I think that's that kind of that la maybe last or, or that next progression in like learning how to initiate offense, right? Yeah. So first you kind of learn how to speed up. You're trying to choose the right ball to do it on. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah, there's, from there's there, little, you're little progressions. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. There is. So I think first is you're trying to choose the right ball. Yeah. Then you're trying yeah. to have it look like a dink and disguise it a little bit yeah. more, right? Yeah. Then yeah. you're trying to pick a spot on your opponent and, and dial in the, the location that you're yeah. going to hit on them. And then after that, once you have all three of those, you can realize that if you're disguising it, you're choosing the right ball, you're executing the right location, you can kind of guess where the probable counterattack is going to yeah. come back, right? Sure. And so you can camp on that side. And if you happen to guess wrong, tip your hat, right? But I think the best attackers, we play with Matt Goebel. He, I think he's a top five attacker in the country for sure. And, and I would say that he often does what you're talking about. He'll choose certain attacks and then he'll sit forehand and kind of camp or guess on the probable location where that counter will come. So to me, I would say that's kind of the last or at least the next progression in learning how to be a better attacker and to be yeah. able to initiate offense. That's a great point. Yeah, for sure. And I think too, like you, you take a look at Ben, right? I mean, usually his recounter is better than his like initial speed up, you know? So I think yep. you can kind of use this one, two combo idea where, 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 where the speed up more so is, you know, calculated what, 
well placed, but it's more so about uh, cleaning off of that off of that recap. It is. Um, you know, some something else. Um, you know that that kind of that kind of hit home with with some of the campers was, you know, like don't be afraid to speed up at eighty percent. And then don't be afraid to speed up at 40% or don't be afraid to speed up with a calculated speed up and don't be afraid to speed up with a non-calculated. It's just more so kind of right. giving them bait and seeing if they hit out balls. Cause I mean, it's, it's so true. Like, you know, there's, there's counter attackers who probably read pace really well. And there's counter attackers who probably don't read off pace very well yeah. or, you know, but yeah. so I think, you know, if, if you, uh, and this is probably a, a fun little tip for the viewers, if you've tried to speed up and you've, and you, and you went the route of like, you know, off pace, uh, calculated, well placed, and that didn't work. Um, then, then I would try the route of maybe, maybe going like eighty percent pace and up a little higher, and purposely try to hit your speed up out and see if they take the bait and to see if they hit it. Because I mean, that's so true. Like stuff up by your face, like it's tough not to be reactionary when you have when you have a hot ball coming in here. You know, I mean, even at our level, yeah. people are still trying to get the hell out of the way. You know, I mean. <laughs> toughest thing in pickleball is is, is reading pace yo know? i mean like right. if 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 you can counter and you have really good tracking ability i mean that is that is such a huge attribute to, to you know to have and i mean i i know myself and this is something i always tell my campers is like like i would i would rather lose head to head than have somebody let my speed up go long because once they let my speed up go long it's like somebody threw some handcuffs on me and threw me back on my side of the side of the court and it like makes me second guess my offense just by the like deflating uh part of like somebody letting a ball go you know um, yeah, it feels like they're toying with you a little yeah, bit, right when you know? they're just so easily yeah. just dodge it and you're like okay <laughs> yeah no no for sure uh so yeah I, yeah as an attacker don't be afraid to attack at different paces and just test your opponent and see if they hit out balls and then as a counter attacker standpoint for 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 gosh sakes, there's a there's a much easier way, and you will you will you will never know until you let one go. Um, <laughs> and and I, something that I told like you know there's some campers that said oh my gosh like I I never let any balls go right and and usually those campers are like the true counterattackers they're like the people who right. you know, they they just right. love their hands right and so I said hey I said next time you come out here whether it's rec play drills or whatever just start your day out by letting some go. Like just, yeah, whether just like experiment they, with it. Yeah, yeah. Whether like they land in or not, just start your rec game out by like letting one go, you know? Right. Um, but um, no, fun stuff, man. Fun stuff. Uh, we got some camps coming up. Uh, so Newport beach. Uh, so viewers, if you guys want to check out our camp in Newport beach, uh, it's going to be right after the, the Newport tournament. Uh, Newport tournament is December 4th to the 6th. Uh, we're going to be in Newport for a week after doing three two-day camps back-to-back. Um, yes, it is going on. Uh, and yes, we will take all the correct safety precaution. Um, and then also, too, the uh, weekend after that, we're going to be running a camp in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. Michigan is locked down right now. Um, but uh, they're, they're supposed to open back up December 14th. So hoping that they open back up for our camp. But um, you guys can check out my, uh, check out my camp schedule by, by going to TysonMcGuffin.com. Um, take a look at camp for this year. And then I will have 2021 camp schedule uh, put on there by the end of the week. Um, so Kyle, anything for us? Yeah, nothing, man. I think we're pretty, pretty thorough. We probably talked people's, people's ear off today, but good okay. stuff. Man. <laughs> uh, Love it. Hey, I want to let all the, all, the, all the viewers know that uh, this water bottle here, uh, as you can see, gosh, it doesn't look very good. Where's that, where's that logo? Get that thing tilted. Can you see, see that? Or Close. No? There you go. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in and out. Yeah, it's yeah, in and out. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, so yeah. so this little water bottle yeah. here you can buy on my website. Go to Tyson uh, TysonMcGuffin.com. Uh, these these water bottles uh, are going for seventy five dollars. And what what um, size is that, Tyson? It, it is, looks it is like one, a beast. What? one gallon, baby. Boom! All right, gallon a day, <laughs> gallon a day for all your hydration needs. Right there in one spot. Bring oh. the gallon. Also, too. <laughs> Blue Army is where it's at. If you don't, if you don't use uh, Blue Army, then shame on you. Who's that clean cut looking guy? Yeah, I there? mean, yeah. can't be you, right? Jeez, man. oh man. <laughs> hey, one, I want to thank all of our sponsors here: uh, Selkirk Sport, Turnagrip, Voodoo Pain Relief Cream, 
1044 Pro, uh, Pickle Play, ASEA, Beamer Therapy, Salt Stick, Vitamin Drip CDA, and Jolt Therapy. Uh, we will be back live next week. I want to thank everybody and take care. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hey, tell me what, like, uh, oh, oh, hang on, hang on, real quick. I just got to stop this. Hang on, real quick. <laughs> head it, head it. Blooper, blooper. Blooper. Okay. <laughs>